Bearing pointers are available in systems such as the G1000, the G5 HSI, and similar PFDs. This close-up view shows bearing pointers on the HSI and the G1000 NXI. The basic presentation is similar, however, in earlier versions of the G1000 and other PFDs such as the Garmin G5. Bearing pointers are a glass cockpit version of RMIs, radio magnetic indicators, that were typically installed in turbine-powered aircraft and used to navigate via VORs and NDBs. Today, in most glass cockpits, you can select what bearing pointers point to, VORs, or any waypoint in the database, an airport, nav aid, intersection, or other fix. Typically, two bearing pointers are available. They appear behind the currently selected course deviation indicator, or CDI. In this example, the CDI is set to the GPS, typically shown in magenta. Although you can use any combination of CDI and bearing pointers, this example shows a typical setup. The CDI set to GPS for navigation to the next fix in the current flight plan or direct to waypoint. Bearing pointers set to VORs tuned in the NAV1 and NAV2 radios to provide distance and bearing information to available VORs, either along or offset from your current flight path. This arrangement increases situational awareness, especially when you are using GPS to navigate to a point many miles from your current location. In a G1000 system, you use the soft keys at the bottom of the PFD to select which bearing pointers to show and the types of fixes they point to. If you fly with a different PFD, check the pilot guide to learn how to display bearing pointers. The labels for the keys or menus vary among versions of the G1000 and other PFDs. Typically, you press a key labeled PFD or select an option from a menu to display bearing pointers. Newer touchscreen displays or PFDs like the Garmin G500 TXI typically use a menu to select and display bearing pointers. To learn more about selecting bearing pointers in the aircraft that you fly, see the pilot guide for the system installed in your aircraft. You can practice using bearing pointers in ATDs or with a PC-based trainer. Let's see how bearing pointers can help you verify your position. You are somewhere southwest of the Seattle area, headed southwest, using GPS as your primary navigation source on a flight to Hoquiam. How can you use bearing pointers set to VORs to quickly confirm your position? The flight plan page shows that you're about 50 nautical miles from the Hoquiam VOR, and the map indicates your position near Cairo intersection. But bearing pointers can quickly give you more details about your current location, and they're especially helpful if you want to contact ATC for flight following, talk to flight service, or if you need to divert. If you're southwest of Seattle, it makes sense to tune the Seattle and Olympia VORs in the NAV1 and NAV2 radios. The bearing pointer set to the Seattle VOR verifies your track along the Victor 27 airway, and a pointer set to the Olympia VOR, south of your position, is a helpful cross-reference as you fly along. Here's a close-up view of the bearing pointers. The single-line bearing pointer, almost hidden beneath the CDI, is set to the Seattle VOR, tuned and active on NAV1. The head of the arrow points back toward the Seattle VOR. The tail of the pointer shows that you're on the 230 degree radial. The double line bearing pointer is set to the Olympia VOR, tuned and active on NAV2. The CDI set to the GPS shows that you're tracking the course that corresponds to Victor 27, the Seattle 230 degree radial, but it doesn't show you exactly where you are along that course. The arrow on the bearing pointer set to Olympia, however, shows the current course to take you directly to the station, 154 degrees, and the tail of the needle shows the radial from Olympia that you're crossing, 334 degrees. Here's how the information from the bearing pointers appears when you mentally transfer the pointers to a chart. The pointers show the intersection of the Seattle 230 and Olympia 334 radials. If you wanted to give your position to ATC or flight service, you could report that you're at about 18 miles north-northwest of Olympia, or, to be unnecessarily precise, crossing the 334 radial. To fly directly to Olympia, turn left to a heading of about 155. Now you're about 34 miles from the Hoquiam VOR. Without measuring that distance on the chart, you can use bearing pointers set to Hoquiam and Olympia to verify your position along the airway. You're at the intersection of the Hoquiam 049 and the Olympia 281 radials. 
If you needed to divert to Olympia, you could first turn to a heading of about 100 to fly directly toward Olympia, and then enter a new waypoint in the GPS or update the flight plan in the G1000. You can also quickly confirm that you're about 22 miles from Olympia, or about 10 minutes estimated time en route at typical Cessna 172 cruise speed. Here's a different situation. You're en route from Boeing Field to Bellingham. You have tuned NAV-1 to the Payne VOR. NAV-2 is set to Pin Cove, Charlie Victor Victor. The bearing pointers show you're at the intersection of the Payne 355 and Pin Cove 092 radials. The distances associated with the bearing pointers are also helpful. You know that you're 11.5 miles from Payne and about 23 miles from Pin Cove. If you need to give a position report to ATC or Flight Service, those details are much more helpful than the distance to the next GPS waypoint in your flight plan, as shown at the top of the PFD. Now suppose that you're in eastern Washington, near Walla Walla and Pasco. The map on the MFD shows you're flying westbound, but not directly toward a VOR or on an airway. Bearing pointers set to the Walla Walla and Pasco VORs can help you quickly verify your location on a chart. The bearing pointers show that you're at the intersection of the Pasco 025 radial and the Walla Walla 285 radial, about 11 miles northeast of Pasco. To fly directly to Walla Walla, turn left to a heading of 105. You're about 33 miles away, some 15 to 20 minutes estimated time en route at typical Cessna 172 speeds. Note that you can't use a bearing pointer to show your position relative to a localizer, which has a single defined course. In this example, you're flying a downwind leg for the ILS runway 20 at Bremerton. NAV-1 is set to the localizer, and NAV-2 is set to the Seattle VOR. The double line arrow points to Seattle, but there's no arrow or data associated with the localizer. To display the localizer tuned in NAV-1, you must switch the CDI. No underlying bearing pointer appears. By the way, if you're checking VORs at an aircraft with a PFD that displays bearing pointers, the process is simple. There's no need to twist OBS knobs and display each navigation CDI separately. Display the bearing pointer, or pointers if the aircraft has dual navigation receivers, tune the VOT or VOR frequencies, and verify that each pointer is correct and within limits. Here, both navigation radios are tuned to a VOT, and both bearing pointers show 1802 and 360 from the test signal, with no bearing errors.